Hi, I'm the Tokenator, and this is Game Theory Impossible. Today, instead of looking at a specific $0.02, cent, $0.05 cent session that I've played recently, we're going to be instead looking at two specific hands coming from two different sessions of two different games. That's because we're going to be looking at one hand from a $0.02, cent, $0.05 cent session, and one hand from a $1, $2 live game that I played recently. The reason for this is because both of these hands incorporate a specific strategy from Villain that makes me personally uncomfortable, and I figured if I go over it, it might better my own game, and also it may help some of you out there that find it interesting or difficult or confusing to deal with. And that, of course, is dealing with Villain's Donk lead. This is when we, the hero, decide to open pre-flop with some kind of raise, and villain out of position when the flop comes decides to bet into us. It's a really weird scenario to deal with. It's not usually a good idea for out of position to make this kind of play, but it does put us in some interesting spots. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We're gonna be starting with a two cent, five cent hand. I'm not gonna show my whole cards this time because I want to think about what my entire range does in this spot. And I want you guys to be thinking that as well. We're here, hero, in the low jack. We have a pretty decent stack, but it's irrelevant because we're playing effectively for about 100 big blinds. We raise it up with our typical 100 big blind low jack raising range, which is in line with the solver, but maybe a little bit tighter. It folds to the big blind who decides to defend, and we go to a monochrome ace, king, six flop, all clubs. We're gonna have a lot of strong pairs here, but of course our one pair type hands go way down in value on these kinds of boards. Villain now leads into us, as I alluded to, for half pot. My strategy in this spot when facing a lead is to call a ton. I'm probably gonna be calling any pair, definitely any decent club, and maybe even some gut shots. The reason for this is it doesn't make a lot of sense for Villain to be donking here. If Villain did have a really strong hand, I think in general they're going to be looking to check raise. The reason for donking is likely because Villain has some kind of draw or one pair hand that they want to set the price for. They don't think I'm going to be raising very often, and that's true. That's because we don't really have a ton of flushes here, given that we opened from the low jack. When we open from the low jack, we're going to have more suited aces and suited kings than we're going to have suited gappers with my current strategy. That doesn't mean that I won't start doing that in the future. All right, we call. According to GTO, when Villain is donking here, they should be using a very small size of 1.5. Villain, in our case, used half pot, three big blinds. And you can see here, there's not really like a specific hand. I guess their bottom pairs choose to donk fairly often, but the rest is just a spread between basically all the hands. So my intuition was to call a bunch. It looks like GTO is doing the same 79.1% of the time. Basically 80% of the time we should be calling here and folding very infrequently. And again, not really any pure decisions here, except for like five, four suited is pretty close to a pure fold. The rest are just frequency folding. For me, that means uh, how I would interpret that and use that in my own strategy is I would just fold my under pairs here, fives and worse, and then maybe like pocket sevens and pocket eights because pocket sevens and pocket eights were still losing to weird donk leads that he might have like pocket nines. So just getting rid of those, we're just gonna be better off, I think. And if we're gonna need to fold 20% of the time, we can, instead of doing these weird frequencies, just eliminate and make some of these into pure folds. I know that makes us exploitable, but nah, I'm not worried about it. We do decide to call, and we see a turn. The turn is the seven of spades, and once again, villain bets. This time he picks a three-fourths pot sizing, which is pretty significant. Again, I think we're going to be calling a fair amount here. However, in this scenario, we might begin to call with stronger holdings, less speculative hands, because I do believe it's gonna be a little bit harder to blow Villain off their hand at some point, and I'd prefer not to be raising into a polarized range. That being said, if I did find a raise here, I would like a small raise size, because I think Villain is really leaned towards pretty much marginal 
hands, and if we decide to raise now and he calls, we can blast River and get him off basically any of those. And we don't need to do a huge raise and only win his nine big blinds. If we do a small raise here, we can build that pot to steal on the river, assuming he doesn't improve. However, according to our GTO solution, we're gonna be calling and folding, never raising. I think that there's room for raising exploitively here uh, because I don't think that Villain is donking and continuing with very nutted hands very often. So we can start to incorporate some raises with some of our junk and begin to steal the pot. That being said, if we have something of value, which I'm pretty certain we do, in this spot, calling makes the most sense because I do think that Villain's going to have a lot of weird marginal hands. That being said, he might have some one club type hands that we could be letting off the hook, not raising. But if you look here from a GTO point of view, we really should not be raising at all. The reason though I think that we're not raising is because when Villain Donk leads in a balanced way, they should have a fair amount of flushes. And I do not think that's the case in reality. So we can start to definitely raise more. I do decide to call. So I think we're likely going to have a pretty decent value hand here, like at least top pair. The river is the eight of spades and Villain bets again. Over two thirds pot. Just a weird line from Villain. What is he triple barreling here except for a flush, right? He really decided to polarize his range in a spot where I do not think that people are going to be leading with really nutted hands. So when the board does not improve any of his draws, and I think he's primarily gonna be leading with marginal and garbage hands, I think we just have to call with any of our value. We decide to call, but let's see what the solution says. On the eight of spades river, it says that we should be calling 27% of the time only. So on the river, we should be massively folding here. Again though, that is a design against a balanced opponent. And in general, in my experience, when I'm facing a donk lead, it tends to be in these kind of micro stakes games, really marginal and or draw type hands. So in this case, if we have a good hand, we have to look them up, unfortunately, because none of the draws got there and none of the marginal hands would continue. So I might even find a call with the king here because it doesn't make sense that villain has a strong hand here, given how infrequently I see people donking flop with nutted hands. So with that in mind, I think we're going to lose sometimes to a set here, which makes some sense, but they're not gonna have that very often. And I really don't think they're ever gonna have a flush. So we put in the call exploitively, probably wider than we should have. Let's see what we had. We had a pretty bad top pair. I suppose we block a straight that doesn't make any sense to have. And Villain shows up with Queen 10 off for a donkey garbage draw that he decided to triple barrel off with. Interesting line from Villain. I mean, I respect the heart, but not a good play. Just to note, Ace-9 suited is a pure fold according to GTO. So it was an exploitative call on our part and I like it. Uh, GTO doesn't, but that's okay. I don't have to agree with it. All right, second hand, this hand comes from a $1, $2 live cash game and it incorporates donking as well, but it's a very, very different scenario. Let's see here. We have pocket kings on the button, a beautiful hand. We have under the gun plus one limping in. Low jack over limps and we're gonna bump it up. When it folds to us, we are going to take a decent sizing here. By the way, these aren't big blinds, these are dollars. So we are gonna raise up to $12, which is a significant raise size. That's 6X the open. I think we can go bigger here in live games. When people limp, they do not wanna fold. So I would have preferred to have seen 15 $16, something that sounds crazy, but really I think works in live. We do bet 12 and as a result, we get a cold call out of the big blind, a call from the limpers as I fully expect. We end up going four ways to a flop. 
that is Jack, Jack, five, two clubs. Big blind checks, under the gun plus one leads. They bet 20 into 49, and when the low jack folds, my decision here is based a lot on whether or not I think the big blind is gonna stick around. If I feel like if I call, big blind's gonna stick around with a whole bunch of stuff, then I might consider finding a raise here sometimes. But I remember in the moment, I looked over and big blind looked pretty disinterested in the pot. And I accompany that with my understanding of the under the gun plus one. Under the gun plus one, I had been seeing donking with all sorts of pairs. Bottom pair, second pair, under pairs. Under the gun plus one was constantly betting when he had anything. I think he really believed in the idea that it's hard to make a pair and hold them and just went with it. I was seeing him triple barrel with bottom pair. I mean, I was seeing him do all sorts of weird things, donk triple barreling with very marginal things. So with that information, I think I gotta look him up here. Of course, I'm never folding flop just yet, but the question is, do I ever raise? And I don't really think I need to if I think big blind is not interested in the pot because I had been seeing under the gun plus one donking with pairs, any pair, any pair. I hadn't seen him do it with any draws. So against any pair, we're doing great. We're really doing terrific and I would rather him just donk triple barrel off and me just call him down. So we call big blind folds and we go to a turn. Seven of hearts doesn't change anything. When under the gun plus one bets again, of course it's possible he has a jack, but I did not read him as strong. I read him as not loving it, but feeling that he needed to bet his hand. So I put him on a five, maybe even something like eight, seven, pocket tens, something of that nature. Not very strong, but willing to bet for value from this donkey. So with that in mind, we call again, and we go to a river. The river being's in the flush. Now this is a little bit of concern. Villain now bets 65, into a pot of 169. That means that if we call, it'll cost 65 to win a pot that'll be almost $300. So we only need to be good like 20% of the time. And it's hard to imagine kings are good 20% of the time against most players. But against this player, I really did believe that uh, we're gonna be good more than that. He was triple barreling all sorts of nonsense for value. So I think pocket kings are just too strong. We also have a club, so it's a little bit less likely he had a club draw because I think he's gonna be limping a lot of suited aces and kings. That's what I see a lot of these people tending to limp. So I think we just gotta look him up here. Again, weird spot. Donking just puts you in these uncomfortable situations. I wonder if there was ever a time where I should have really raised the flop. In any case, I do call, and turns out he did have a flush draw. I know everybody in the comments is going to be like, of course he had a flush, are you stupid? But, like I said, I'd been seeing him donk triple barreling with pairs. Some of those times, draws came in on the river, and he just didn't care. Any hand he had, he would bet. So... I didn't think there was any reason to raise really at any point against this specific player. Now the question is, in this spot, against a player with no reads, do we ever raise flop? Do we ever fold flop? What is your play on the flop facing this donk bet four ways in a live $1, $2 game with no real reads on your opponent? I made my plays based off of reads that I trusted and I think I can stand by them, liking them. Now knowing that he will do this with any draw it seems i think i have to be more careful but i just had seen him do this multiple times with nothing but a bad pair and i'd never seen him do it with a draw so with that in mind i think that the call is fine but i ask you now what would you have done differently uh, especially if you didn't have any reads on the opponent with my reads would you agree with my assessment or would you still think i should fold on the river here or do you think it's crazy that I didn't raise the flop? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
and I'll see you on the next one. Next week, we will finally be doing the knit experiment. Don't miss it.